Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered what our planet was like long, long before humans? We're talking about a time so ancient, the world would be completely unrecognizable. Today, we're going on a journey 250 million years back in time to the early Triassic period. This was a world fresh out of an apocalypse, a strange and brutal reality unlike anything seen before or since. So buckle up, because this is what Earth used to look like. Back then, you wouldn't need a globe, you'd need a diagram for a single, massive supercontinent, Pangaea. Imagine almost all of Earth's land, over 95% of it, squished together into one giant mass. Off to the east, a few large islands, which would one day become parts of China and Japan, were separated by the warm Paleo-Tethys Sea. But the main event was the ocean surrounding Pangaea. This was the Panthalassic Superocean the largest body of water our planet has ever known, even bigger than the Pacific is today, covering over 60% of the globe. But the weird geography probably wouldn't be the first thing you'd notice. The first thing you'd notice is the heat. It was unbearably hot. Some scientists think summer temperatures in the heart of Pangaea could have soared to between 120 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 49 to 60 degrees Celsius. The center of the supercontinent was a vast, arid desert, often rainless because huge mountain ranges blocked the clouds. Life here was nearly impossible, and while the days were scorching, the nights could be freezing due to the lack of humidity and vegetation. Why was it so hostile? Well, the world was recovering from the single worst mass extinction in history, the Permian-Triassic extinction event, often called the Great Dying. Massive volcanic eruptions from the Siberian traps had pumped the atmosphere full of CO2, creating a runaway greenhouse effect that cooked the planet. This cataclysm wiped out 90% of all species, including over 95% of life in the oceans. But life, as they say, finds a way. In the slightly more forgiving polar regions of Pangaea, survivors were making a comeback. Now you might expect to see dinosaurs, since this was the Mesozoic era, but they wouldn't show up for another 7 million years. Instead, the most common animal on the planet was a creature called Lystrosaurus. This pig-sized plant-eating therapsid was a disaster survivor. With little competition, it exploded in population, sometimes making up 95% of all animals in a given area. They weren't totally alone though. The therapsids, a group of non-mammalian synapsids, also survived. One of them, Moscarinus, was a cat-like predator that likely hunted Lystrosaurus, but the old rulers were on their way out. The new kings of Pangaea were the Archosauriforms, a group of carnivorous, croc-like reptiles. One of the first on the scene was Proterosuchus, a 13-foot-long predator that was initially thought to be an ambush hunter like a modern crocodile, but now seems to have been a terrestrial hunter stalking the arid plains. But even Proterosuchus had something to fear. The top predators of this world were the Erythrosuchids. These were giant, robust archosaurs, and the most fearsome of them all was Erythrosuchus. This thing was the biggest land carnivore of its time, reaching over 16 feet long and weighing two tons. And the scariest part? It had a disproportionately massive head, weirdly similar to a T-Rex's skull, equipped with sharp, conical teeth for gripping and tearing. With its powerful bite, Erythrosuchus was the undisputed king of Pangaea. The brutal dryness was occasionally broken by mega monsoons. These weren't your average rainy seasons, they were supercharged by the sheer size of Pangaea, bringing torrential seasonal downpours unseen today. These wet seasons probably allowed life to briefly flourish even in the deserts, but in some places, like the Arcadia Formation in modern-day Australia, there were lush, watery oases year-round. Here, the most common animals weren't reptiles but amphibians. Creatures from the ancient Temnospondyl order thrived in these rivers and lakes. These wetter areas were also crawling with insects, spiders, millipedes, grasshoppers and beetles. The forests, however, were a bit sad. The great dying had wiped out most tree species. The most common plant was Pleuromea, a strange-looking plant that was usually no taller than a shoe. Out in the devastated super-ocean, life was also struggling. The water was lethally hot, with tropical seas hitting 104 degrees Fahrenheit, or 40 Celsius. Yet, new life was emerging. The very first marine reptiles, the ichthyosaurs, made their debut, 
They were small and primitive, swimming like eels in shallow coastal waters. They were joined by the ancestors of the mighty pliosaurs, but these early versions, like Cartorhynchus, were tiny, about the length of a ruler. These new reptiles swam among vast microbial reefs, alongside surviving groups of fish like coelacanths. Sharks were still around too, but they were much smaller than their ancestors, a testament to how tough the times were. The reef lay... And that was Earth, 250 million years ago, a scorched, recovering planet caught between a global apocalypse and the dawn of a new era. It was a harsh, alien world, but it was from the ashes of this difficult time that life would rebound, paving the way for the age of dinosaurs. Thanks for taking this trip to the distant past with me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our next adventure. Let me know in the comments what ancient world you'd like to visit next. See you in the next one.